What's up guys, my name is Lucas, and I'm here to talk to you about black-headed pythons today. I wanted to make a video about black-headed pythons because I think they are amazing animals, and there's really not that much information available on the internet so that people can learn about them. Black-headed pythons belong to the family Aspidites, just like the Woma python, which is a little bit more popular in the States. Um, so black-headed pythons are Aspidites melanocephalus. They are an Australian python. They're found all across the northern end of Australia, from Western Australia all the way to Queensland. In the wild, black-headed pythons inhabit a variety of different habitats, ranging from forests to scrublands to sparsely vegetated deserts. Black-headed pythons like to shelter in things like tree hollows, rocky outcrops, burrows from other animals, and even termite mountains if they find one. Their diet includes mostly reptiles such as lizards, skinks, other snakes, bearded dragons, legless lizards, and they also eat small mammals, birds, and frogs when they come across them. Black-headed pythons are ophiophagic, which means that they eat other snakes, which is pretty crazy to think about when you have no arms. It's like a noodle swallowing another noodle, all with its mouth. One of the most amazing things about the black-headed pythons, in my opinion, is that they're immune to some of Australia's most venomous snakes. They're known to eat uh, snakes like the king brown snake and the mulga snake because they're literally immune to those toxins. This is Demi. She is my female black-headed python. Believe it or not, this snake is only about four months old. They hatch really big. They're big babies. And that is because this species has been known to grow upwards of eight, nine, ten feet, uh, which is a really pretty sizable python. Obviously nothing like a reticulated python or a Burmese python, but still quite a bit bigger than like a ball python. Female black-headed pythons can lay anywhere from five to ten eggs. Um, so compared to other pythons, relatively small clutches. The egg size is enormous for these guys, which is, you know, why they hatch out to be such large babies. Now, as you can see, the black-headed pythons are extremely docile, extremely placid. Obviously, just like with anything, you're gonna have the odd animal that isn't, but it seems like most of the time they're relatively nice, like the two that I have, and if they're not, it seems like you can tame them down in most cases. I absolutely love this snake. She will just sit like this and practically fall asleep in my hand. She's so chill. Uh, she eats like a champ, which is a concern with baby black-headed pythons because they are reptile eaters in the wild. They can be a little bit hesitant to get started on mammal prey, specifically the rodents that we feed them here in the United States. But uh, once they get going, if you get your black-headed python from a reputable breeder, they will only sell them to you once they're feeding. Once they get going, these snakes are absolutely wonderful feeders. I have never had my black-headed pythons refuse a meal. You actually kind of have to be careful not to overfeed them. These guys are prone to obesity and fatty liver disease if you feed them too large and too fatty of rodents. Uh, because again, in the wild, they're eating reptiles. Only rarely are they eating mammals. So when you're pumping them full of lab-raised rats, which have very high fat content, you know, their systems aren't made to accommodate that and there can be negative health implications. So the best way to feed these guys in captivity is to offer smaller meals more often. For this girl, as a four month old, I'm feeding her an appropriately sized mouse uh, once a week, never anything big enough to leave a bulge. However, this becomes much more important with adults. For my six and a half, seven foot male, I feed two adult mice or one quail a week and never anything bigger than an adult mice. Some people feed their blackheads rats, I do not. Now, blackheaded pythons have a very wide variety of colors and patterns. As you can see, this girl here has quite a bit of color. Um, she has some oranges, some yellows, and really beautiful banding. That is typical from what I've researched more of the eastern locality animals, uh, whereas western black-headed pythons tend to be a lot more high contrast black and white with not a lot of those colors. Black-headed pythons are both diurnal, meaning active during the day, and nocturnal, active at night, during different times of the year. During the colder months, black-headed pythons are dominantly diurnal, 
meaning that they're active during the day, which makes sense when you think about it. They want to get outside and do their activity for the day while the sun's up before it gets too cold at night. During the warmer months, black-headed pythons tend to be nocturnal. They'll sleep most of the day and they'll get their uh, activities in at night, you know, whatever python activities entail. One of the most unique and noticeable features about black-headed pythons is, of course, that trademark black head. And a lot of people wonder why they have that. It's not just for looks. Uh, interestingly enough, what these guys do in the wild is when they're hiding in, say, a cave or a rock crevice or a tree hollow or a burrow, they'll just stick only that head out into the light to soak up their heat and sunlight. So they're gonna thermoregulate their entire bodies just through this head. It acts almost like a solar panel for them, which is amazing. I'm not an expert, but if I had to guess, I would say that they probably do that to keep their body out of harm's way and stay a little bit more discreet so not to be picked up by predators out there in the wild. So unlike most pythons, the black-headed pythons and woma pythons do not have heat pits on their face, you know, the organ that most python species use to sense heat in dark or, you know, low-light environments. Um, so for a long time, scientists thought that uh, the black-headed pythons and the woma pythons were actually a more primitive uh, form of python because they lacked those pits on their face. Uh, I believe that new research has shown that it might actually be possible that blackheads and womas are more evolved and evolved away those pits in order to facilitate digging because there's not really much use in having those pits when you're getting your face in the dirt all day. You just get your pits all plugged up with sand and they don't do their job very well. Blackheaded pythons have been known to grow 9 to 10 feet but the average is smaller at around six to eight. Males are generally smaller by about a foot. Females, like this girl here, are gonna get a bit bigger. Their lifespan in captivity, just like most pythons, is about 20 to 30 years, maybe the average being around 25. And black-headed pythons are regarded as constrictors. Um, interestingly enough, when I feed my two black-headed pythons, neither of them really like to constrict. Uh, <laughs> they kind of just grab the food item directly off of tongs, or if I set it down in the enclosure, they'll just go right up to it and grab it. And uh, they don't tend to constrict, they don't tend to squeeze it. What I've noticed them do is pick it up and go up next to a wall or anything that they can push up against and swallow that thing whole. They'll just kind of slam it up against the wall and then uh, get it down. So it's interesting. I wonder if that is because they hunt in burrows in the wild and maybe they don't have room to constrict, but I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> they might just honestly be kind of weird. In my experience so far, black-headed pythons have a wacky personality. I mean that in the best way possible. They are incredibly active, incredibly intuitive. You know, maybe it's all in my head, but they seem smarter than other snakes. One of the funniest things that my black-headed pythons do every time is after a handling session, when I put them back in, both of them, without fail, uh, will go straight for the water and chug it for <laughs> 15 to 20 seconds like it was such a workout to hang out with me. And then uh, they dunk their head in it entirely and kind of do like a, a circle around the bottom of the water bowl. Um, they don't soak, but they love to stick their head in the water and look around under there. Maybe they're fishing, I don't know. So in terms of husbandry, I like to keep my black-headed pythons with a hot spot around 92 to 95 degrees uh, on the warm side, and then about 78 to 80 degrees on the cold side. I have a window in my room, so I don't worry too much about lighting. I let just the natural sunlight control their uh, day-night cycle, their photo period. I provide these guys with a warm hide and a cold hide. Of course, a water bowl. I like to use a drier wood chip substrate for these guys, whether it be aspen or pine. They are not a species that needs any kind of high humidity. Uh, they do better with it a bit drier. In addition, they do like to dig from time to time, so I like giving them a, a substrate where they can get underneath it and create little burrows if they like to. For my adult blackhead, I also cut a hole on the top of a black hide box so that he can slither into it from above so it feels like he's going into a burrow. So somewhat of a subterranean hide box and that is the one that he chooses to use 100% uh, of the time. <laughs> Black-headed pythons are not very popular in the United States um, and the reason for that is that 
there isn't a very large population of them. So the animals that we have in the United States were either smuggled out <laughs> in the 70s and 80s or uh, were imported legally through zoos. Um, but there's not a large stock. And in addition to that, it's kind of a slow going process adding to that stock because they only lay five to 10 eggs compared to a carpet python that could give you, you know, 30 eggs a year. The population is growing a lot slower for these guys and there's less people breeding them. Um, they kind of have a reputation of being a little bit harder to breed. This species takes about four to five years to become sexually mature as well, which is slightly longer than other species, which is another reason why they're not expanding rapidly in the hobby. With all that in mind though, black-headed pythons are an amazing animal. I would recommend them to anybody that is relatively experienced with snakes. I don't think that they're the best beginner animal. I also don't think you need to be very advanced uh, in order to keep these guys. Once they're established on food at a young age, they're really pretty easy to take care of as long as not overfeeding them um, fatty rodents, you're gonna have an amazing uh, healthy animal for years to come. Like I said, temperament wise, my experience with black-headed pythons has been only positive. Uh, this girl is only four months old and has absolutely no attitude at all. My eight-year-old male is also puppy dog tame. Um, neither of them have ever tried to bite me, and neither of them have even had problems with feeding response bites. You know, with Woma pythons, that's a big issue where they think everything is food and they literally try to eat you. Uh, <laughs> these guys have not had any of those problems uh, for me so far. They seem to really enjoy being out of their enclosure. Obviously, it's a uh, contentious debate to say that any snake enjoys handling, but they really seem to me to at least enjoy being out of the enclosure and being able to explore things like my microphone. They're very calm, intuitive snakes. They don't move very quickly, no rapid movements. They're very easy to handle, but they are also a bit more active than something like a ball python that's just gonna sit there, um, which makes it interesting. Well, everybody, I hope you learned a lot about black-headed pythons. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions or comments, please comment them down below. I will read them all and try to get back to as many of them as possible. Uh, also, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be rolling out a lot of content in the months to come. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Lucas. Uh, subscribe to the channel, Centralian Exotics, and I will see you in the next video.